Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Y'all have made y'all choice. This is the one y'all wanted today. Inside Prison, Britain Behind Bars, Season 1, Episode 4. Let me make sure this is the one. Yeah, this it. This it. I need 200 likes, man. <laughs> Stop what you're doing right now. Hit that like button, man. Let's get into it. Because I know you enjoy the content, so just hit the like button. I don't want to see this. Britain's prison estate stretches from Inverness to Dartmoor. Over six months, we followed the extremes of life inside, from women's jails to high security units. Yeah, like this, yeah. Just make sure no one's coming for me. Across the country, prison. This is where? Deerbalt County? Okay. How are you, man? Make sure we've got your best side going past. Oh, yeah. oh I. Deer Bolton County Durham houses 387 men aged 18 to 24. Are you wanted by the police? They not know you're here. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> you all right, fella? Good job, the sister. In the last year, serious prisoner on prisoner assaults here have more than doubled. Custodial manager Miss Barkley is one of the prison's senior officers tasked with keeping order. Here at Deer Bolton, we have a, a very wide spectrum of the offences that the young men are in for. Jeez. Lads that might only be in for a few months, right up to young men that are just starting life sentence with very high tariffs. Well, we're waiting for the big lads coming past. <laughs> lads, steady. And sometimes, as well with this age group, what starts as a bit of friendly banter and play fight in there, one thinks he's been disrespected or looks bad oh, in front so of his peers or somebody uses too much force and the other lad. Well, this is like for youth. Okay, this one's for youth. Doesn't like it. And quite often they then turn into full scale fights. Since the lads have had violent altercations between each other, then we look to separate them on the wings. It's 9 a.m. on E Wing. Prison officer Cameron Dalston has just taken charge of Leon Cook, one of Deerbolt's most volatile inmates. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Understand how it's gone from being no water in here. Leon he's been on various wings, always in trouble, always scrapping resisting against staff. Certainly from the first time that you arrived here, he was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Give us five minutes, Paul. Stop white Northwesters, that's what it is. Shut up. Do you know the duty of care is? I don't care. I'll get you sorted, Leon. He, he, he waited till he closed that door to tell him all that. At just 20 years old, Leon has already served four years inside for a long list of offences. And comes to jail July 2015. 22 months for selling class A's. Then um, three years, four months for a robbery. 12 months for a flick blade that got nicked within jail. And then I've had an extra five years on top for a stabbing in jail. And his list gets longer. Leon has been involved in a violent assault on a fellow inmate. So since he was 15, so what is he, he a virgin in that one? All he knows is Vaseline and, 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 they often they can get away with it as well, you know what I mean? Stop! Stop! And giving drugs away for free. <laughs> Leon will now face a judge who could add time to his sentence. Why he get out of the hole and fail and did a whole roll? Look at it, look at the roll. <laughs> Leon will now face a judge who could add time. Roll, acrobatic Leon in the building. To his sentence. It's a couple extra days with 
could be a lot worse, you know what I mean? I'm not caught you up in big, so I won't put in it. And duty governor Paul Flack is keeping him on the close watch. Why are you still on your side, not letting me and Mikey out together? You assaulted your prisoner. Yeah, I've got no problems, you know what I was trying to mean, so... But it's a way of reducing violence. If I wanted to cause violence, I'd do it. I'd take that as a threat. So we'll have to apply additional measures. A dry ass potato. Every so often we do have to accept a prisoner on who's been round every wing in the jail. I think all it boils down to is how we manage them. At the end of the day, we've got to look after them, make them see that they can do the time in a constructive manner. The rehabilitation of inmates is a key part of the prison service remit. From Diabol, he's one of the finest. He is, he is. the one and only DJ MC. <laughs> Further offending by prisoners whilst in jail is on the rise. Coupled with tougher sentences being imposed, both the young and the old are serving longer stretches behind bars. The over 60s are now the fastest growing age group in the prison population. In Bullingdon's segregation unit, there's one old age prisoner proving to be a problem for staff. Who Barry first? That's that's uh that's Russell. Pete and Bob's cousin, Russell. Pete Boss and Russell. It was all three of them back in the day. But now Russell, he took the time for Pete and Boss so they can so they can get their career bussing and it worked. Oh. Bussin' Russell. Barry, one second, I'm coming around. What's wrong? Oh, oh, oh. Jules, you'll get your bloody hot water. Stop banging. Right, do you want to see the governor? No. Why? Oi. 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 slack. 60 year old Barry Vasey has been in the seg for six months and refused. I know they said his name was Barry, but they called him Russell. Russell Barry. Bustle Russell Barry. Barry. Just to leave. Wait, put me in no, look at the state of the toilet, though. Uh, but, I mean, it smells near where it's clean it, out. It's going to smell, though, Barry. Look at the state of it. Barry's... He has got particularly poor hygiene. Initially, when he was he was on a dirty protest. Um, and now he seems to have settled, but he won't leave the seg. He, he's refusing to locate anywhere in the jail. Yeah, a lot of lies told, saying I do dirty protests all the time. That's... Bullshit. Supervising officer Sarah Scarrett has the tough job of overseeing his weekly cell move. We keep two cells down here for Barry. He stays in a cell for a week at a time, and then he gets moved to the next cell, and then we get industrial cleaners that will come up and completely disinfect. For his hygiene, that's disgusting. Bro. The cell that he's been in. Yeah, he took me out of a clean cell, put me in a dirty cell, so I made it dirty right? Go on, go on. His cell stinks. So I made it dirty right? Go on, go on. Bro, what is on the walls? What is... His cell stinks. I mean, beyond bad. And there's lots of you open the door and flies come out. I told him the toilet was blocked. Nothing was done about it. So I just went, I uh, just uh, filled the toilet up with poo because I couldn't flush it down. Then I had my tea bags and break them up and I threw them all over the ceiling. Uh, can I have some clean bedding or what? Yeah. yeah. Every protest I have done, I have won every single protest. Because you're dirty. These conditions are the ones that push you because it's pure disgusting and you don't want to be around it. You feel dirty. Once you've been there, you want to wash all your hands and clean your body. In an ideal world, I wouldn't be coming in to move someone that's got excrement everywhere. But then you sign up for the job and, you know, you're going to deal with people that act and pay very differently to ourselves. Well, I wouldn't call it any cleaner. So all it was was a bit of rubbish down there. And um, I knew they were coming down. So I put some rubbish in the toilet and done a big shit. Barry first came to prison in 1981, aged 23, and has since been sentenced to a total of 40 years behind bars. I don't like going on dirty protests, but 
You know, there's lots of bad things that have been done to me in this prison. Like a lump of poo that was in my flask. They prison officers can basically do what they like and get away with it. Definitely Bullenden is the worst prison out of the 34 prisons I've been in. In 2018, a new key worker scheme was introduced, handing each prison officer... 34 prisons I mean, like you said that like you was proud of that number like yeah, bro. you've been down for four responsibility to mentor five to six inmates at Bullingdon to improve circumstances for Barry and prison staff he's been assigned a key worker the suggestion was made to get Barry to do an incel job as in the distraction bags new recruit 22 year old Beth Buchanan yeah see Barry yeah Barry's key worker my goal for Barry would be to obviously get him out of the seg. Every week I will come down and I'll speak to him and he knows to expect me, so if he's got any issues or gripes or anything like that. She all right. I mean, for a prison guard, Beth. Beth Buchanan. Ah, uh, he can come to me with those. Consistency for him is just crucial. Did you want to write a letter today? Yeah. Um. Do it from the door if you want it. Well, as I say, do you want to go out on the walkway? You're good in there? I'll close the door over if you are. Or yeah. do you want it left open? Yeah, yeah. Beth is helping Barry write a letter. Who's your letter to this time? She's the first person who has persuaded Barry to leave the segregation unit in six right. months. Right, hang on. Can you read that out to me, please? I can. I've got to work out, make sure I get this right. All right, all right. All right, when I was sentenced, it was stated by the prosecution that I had three, three previous offences, and as you know, I haven't. Good? No, got that wrong. What? You no. said that. You said that. Yeah, listen. All right, all right, go on. So now. if you'd have let me finish. All right, I'll start again then. Oh, my No, no, <laughs> just start again. I don't go too fast. And I won't interrupt until you finish. All oh, right, right, there we go, deal. And if there's anything wrong, I'll come back. We'll to come it. back to it, right, I won't then. Right. You're the one that's representing me and can prove it is all false from my criminal record and need to do something as this is serious making things up. Making false allegations against me. Making things up and false allegations. Yeah. Cool. I like their relationship, man. Tell what I could do with it. Come take. Do you remember like a small? She's taking a genuine interest, like. As long as shit is genuine, you know what I'm saying? Then it's, it's a hundred with me. Huh? I want to go back in. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we can go home. Oh, yeah. That's right. fine, right. You want to go back inside? Because yeah. I can see you look cold. Yeah. Okay. And that bench was work. We got Barry's letter written, which is good. Once you get to the end, he, you can see it makes a difference to him, so it's all right. A key worker's role is to integrate inmates with prison life through work and education. Beth has a plan for Barry. You know, you get distraction packs and what have you. What's that? So it's like um, puzzles or word word searches. Never heard of it. Yeah, they offer them if you're. What would you call them? Distraction packs. Distraction. Distraction packs. How would you feel about if we got you doing those in your cell and getting paid for it? Barry's biggest issue, I would say, is actually his lack of trust for staff. She said she was going to try and get them to work. That remains to be seen. Distraction packs for doing puzzles, you getting paid in that? Oh, first time. This is how we get our drugs. Smuggling is a profitable business from drugs to mobile phones. Blue glove, yeah. Little baby oil. Jails are awash with a. He's too proud of that. He's too proud. A little baby, little, little, little baby oil. Like. That's the, that's the noise your, your anus made when it went. Listed items. More than 70,000 articles were seized last year, but many more make their way into the hands of inmates. You can see me ask you, can it? At Deerbolt, a handful of young offenders have found a convenient way to distribute illicit items. <laughs> Every Friday, Muslim inmates from all wings of the prison congregate at the chapel for Jummah prayers. We have about 100 men who are of the Muslim faith background. People come and they don't just take part in prayers, they come to associate, they will talk to each other, have a laugh at the same time. My job as a managing chaplain is to have the responsibility of making sure that everyone's safe in this area. But in recent weeks... It's like recess. 
Yeah, he like he like the recess supervisor. Y'all know what recess is in school. You go play on the playground and. That safety has been threatened. A number of fights have broken out in the chapel between inmates. These guys, I have a lot of fucking respect. Come on! It's suspected some worshippers are exploiting the service to smuggle contraband. Thank you! Y'all know it's in their booty. Y'all gotta check that hole out. They hole out. This is this is the Alex, stop where are all the male officers at? I just seen two women officers and male officers just looking at oh, there we go. Violence reduction officer Nick Martin is reviewing body camera footage of the incident. We have intelligence that suggests two guys have been paid by a, a, a group of other prisoners to cause a distraction so another group can then pass drugs, pass phones. It's quite a hairy situation. There's a lot of people involved, a lot of confusion. Guys are trying to surge out the chapel. You know, a lot of these guys are drug dealers. We're controlling who's going back, not you. All right? It's ridiculous. This how disrespectful. I work very closely with the imam. Just to make it as decent and as safe a place as we can. He's still here, isn't he? He's been involved in numerous incidents since. We will look through all the CCTV footage, and we will look through all the body one camera footage, we will look at all the intel that's coming in. Did I say you were disrespectful? Are you clearly yeah. talking to me? Well, yeah, I'm talking to you, I'm yeah, saying. So that means you're saying I'm no, I said I'm how? Anyone that may be a part of the problem of creating disturbance in the Friday prayers, we will have to ban them. Oh well, yeah, to control your back. This is Mr. Um, Junaid al Hassan, isn't it? Yes. But he's very clever, isn't he? On his own, He's quite a compliant, polite prisoner. But when he's surrounded by negative peers, he plays up and he's like... Wow, he's one of those, huh? What we call those in Chicago is a goofy. You get around other people and, and then you feel like you tough. He lets himself down. We have to impose a ban on Jimmy Right, gentlemen, thank you. The information situation in and outside the chapel now under control. We're escorting all offenders back to their units. Hostel one over. The prisoner identified at the centre of the unrest is 20-year-old Junaid Al Hassan. Black full of goodies, different types of magazines and pictures, man. If my neighbour's feeling a bit giddy and excited, he needs to bust a nut, then I can just pass him some pictures for him. Junaid. Is is serving time for drug-related offences, and like many inmates, has found ways to clean up inside. So I've got about nine, ten linkses, fucking about 15 redoxes. Oh, I've got like about 80 pounds worth of shower gels in here, man. I've got anything you want, like, you've got it in here, man. I can get you it within a second. His reputation as a wheeler dealer is drawing unwanted attention from prison security. Says you have been excluded from worship service and group work. The reason for your exclusion is the governor judges that they, that your presence is likely to cause a disturbance or be a threat to security or control. They're saying our oh, drugs are getting passed, this is getting passed, that's getting passed. But they're just presuming shit, you know what I mean? They're presuming before they even know what's going on. You're saying that that's getting passed and that's getting passed. You've never caught anybody passing nothing. Looking for any excuse to get out here, especially with me on this chapel ban. They let me go work, they let me go gym, but they don't let me go chapel. It don't make no sense. Boom, banged up for the rest of the day, 23 hours. I get it. They cool when I'm working, but they can't go to pray. I get there's a there's an assumption of what's going on in there, but hey. Across Britain, a third of all prisoners are being left banged up for more than 22 hours a day. But there are some prisoners in the system who choose to stay locked up. Exercise! Well, no one's come out today. At HMP Earlstoke, a Category C male prison, 
There's a wing that caters for these self-isolating inmates. Chris? <coughs> Are you letting isolators out now? You all right? You coming out or not? With people that just want to go serve their time and be done and not talk to nobody? Or are these the sex offenders that just don't want to go in the yard with other prisoners? This board is our wing board. All the ones on the board with do not unlock, DNU on them, are the ones that are self isolation so they basically do not come out of their cells. Well, we're the wing that's out the way, down the bottom end of the jail. People from around the jail who move down to Marlborough because they get into debt and other troubles on their wings, they have to come down here. They feel safer down on this wing. Jo and her fellow officers manage some of the most vulnerable inmates in the prison, including 40-year-old Jamie Ford. I can't be around big crowded places, do you know what I mean? I'm not landing. I saw a man that I got abused by a bloke. I feel scared and intimidated. Ford has served. I got abused by a bloke. I feel scared. Do you know what I mean? I'm not landing. Saw a man that I got abused by a bloke. I feel scared and intimidated. Ford has served five years for violence, but he's been self-isolating for nine months. See what it is? It's so easy nowadays to get into a fight. You know what I mean? And if you get into a fight, one more fight for me, I've been told by judges. Well, I'll get life off. I'll never get out. But I feel so I understand why he's doing it. One more fight, he's in life. And I, 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 I self-isolate as well. I'd better be on my door because there's only me. Who's, who's going to do it to me if it's just me? Do you know what I mean? They do get um, half an hour at a cell a day when everybody else is locked up. There you go. So we need to get them behind their doors so we can then carry on with the regime and get the isolators out shortly. So we're on a strict time scale. Come on, Mr. Silver, please. Well, you've had plenty of time to get water. Come on, please. Can you grab me something? No, I can't. Should I get it? You need to be quick. <laughs> Despite spending 23 and a half hours a day in his cell, Ford will only come out if he feels it's safe. I suffer from PTSD and uh, unstable personality disorder. I didn't know I had all this. I just thought I was a football. A lot of them are on meds. They rely on those meds. If they don't get their meds, that plays on their mental health as well. Boy did not leave the doorway. God damn. Hmm. You want them, eh? You've got to pick them up tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I've got enough for today. Yeah. But I think you should pick them tomorrow. Right. I've been told by the source that someone's going to be in healthcare waiting for me. Right, okay. Can I pick them up this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Everyone's banged up, though. Yeah. More broths to chapel. In order to pick up his medication, Paranoid. Ford must leave the safety of the wing. Right, okay. I'll see if I can get him off now. We've only got the cleaners out, so I'll see what he says. Yeah. Are you all right to go with the cleaners out? Right. I will. To Ford, the short trip to healthcare is fraught with danger. Got to come out of one of them, haven't you? Shiv. Protection. You look after yourself, mate, haven't you? If they start coming towards me, I'm going to stab one of them. In jail, you don't really want to be a target, do you know what I mean? Because I self harm, you stand down. Hey, he, hey, that PTSD shit real. He ain't leaving his cell without it, just like I ain't leaving my crib without it. I don't, I don't blame him. <laughs> I've been shot at before, but I ain't going nowhere without my boots. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. No, don't get here. <laughs> What's up? Well, at least now you've got another week for us. That's the main thing. Yeah. Right. Good. Prescription medication is a valued commodity in prison. One in five inmates admit to misusing it. We do require an ambulance. He's not waking up. I just want to let y'all know I did not pick my nose. I scratched it. It was itching on the inside. Um, he's in the recovery position. But with no safe place for prisoners to store it, 
incidents of theft are all too common. If someone's picked my meds out of the cell, then meds what people use to get their heads down in the night time. I, I have them in the daytime, in the morning. Stop my head from racing around, because I get voices in my head and that tell me to do stuff, you know what I mean? So, like, without my meds, the voices come back. Like, this, 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 is what, this, this is what I was doing three days ago, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I was doing stuff like that three days ago when I was on my meds and that, you know, building Big Ben and that. But, you know, but without my meds, I can't do any of that because I can't concentrate. Yeah, folks need that Adderall to concentrate. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not funny, man. <laughs> my meds stop my thoughts from racing around, voices in my head and that. Without the meds, I'm fucked. Following the recent unrest at Diabolt Young Offender Institution, a prison-wide clampdown is in force. And a specialist search team is on the hunt for contraband. There's a bit of parcel tape there, which looks as though it's got uh, tennis ball strands. A lot of the parcels that come over have got fish hooks on them. They fish the lines out, gather them in. One tennis ball could be worth maybe a thousand pound. Once they get them into their windows, they're basically chiseled out between brick into each other's cells. The whole going straight through to the next cell. It's like a rabbit warren. Just check your waistband there, mate. OK? Already serving a ban from chapel, Wheeler Dealer Janaid is now subject to a cell search. Rules are there to be broken, man. So I do a break them. Yeah, break them, but don't get caught. Not getting caught. Sometimes I get caught. Look like all the time to me. It's a game, innit? Play the game. One of the hiding places in the air, in a mattress. Little do you know, he be doing that little hole in that mattress. That ain't no hiding place. That's an intercourse dial. Tough. Tough. There's a joint there. Right like there. But it's the next door cell yielding the most results. This is either spice or cannabis. Yeah, it's gone for. Oh, spice. Well. Some Reggie. God, that, that ain't no that spice. It's for. I can charge it. I'm available. There's everything available, man. Smartphones, little phones, drugs, spice, cocaine, everything. Everything's available, man. At a price. Right, so, found a joint, and this located. Doors, the joint was just outside of your window, window. all right? Right in the windowsill bit. Well, okay. about that. well, obviously the windows are all sealed now, they're all caged off. So it'll be placed on your port for it. All right, son? Yeah, that's mine, that's cool. Is that, is that everything, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. You've got to be two steps ahead in jail, man. They've tried to do shit about it, but they can't do shit about it, because it's too clever for them, man. With the searchers proving a success. But you gotta realize, as a criminal, you give them a little. You let them catch a little, so they get satisfied, so they overlook. They get, they get overzealous. Oh, I got this. That, that gotta be it. Then they ease up. They search because they found this. But they really, it's just a decoy, man. Sometimes. Officers are disrupting inmate networks by relocating key players. Leon, stop asking around, man. We're moving cells. Taps are working absolutely fine. We've got a board here. We do a bit of cleaning there. Windows are intact. Yeah, Trying not to amazing. knock them out. On E Wing, Leon is being moved to a new cell following intelligence that he may have been dealing from his window. I don't know, that security think I'm into all sorts. Intelligence, this, intelligence, that. And obviously, they think I'm selling drugs on the window and that. This was Leon's old. Anybody with a girl tattooed on their neck is clearly. A menace to society. What the fuck? Tell I, as you can see, the window is no longer here. It's over here. He was being an absolute nuisance. He couldn't resist it. He'd had a window out. He was shouting at everybody that was going past. The governors had, had mentioned it, uh, so we had no choice but to move him away from the cell that was facing onto the route. Is there anything else? Is there anything else you need out here? Yeah, yeah. Done. So some cleaning bits and pieces out. Due to his poor behaviour, 
Leon has been stripped of privileges and is currently on basic regime. Basic regime is for two week punishment without TV, you know, without association and things like that. The biggest thing for you right now is getting off basic, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. And the problem is once you're putting grown men on punishment. You're on, mate, it's hard to get back off. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that because I've seen it once. You know, we've had good lads go on basic and then they've ended up on it for months. I'd like to think that we can give them a second chance. We've still got to try and make them see that this isn't where they should be, this isn't the lifestyle they should be living. There's more to life than being stuck in jail. At the chapel, Miss Barkley and her fellow officers are implementing new control measures for Friday prayers. It's a metal detecting pole and we use it to assist us doing any searching. I feel like that like is mandated like that should have been there from the start. Like why is that being implemented? Prisoners will be asked to walk past it slowly and it lights up red if they've got anything metal that they shouldn't have on them. That's great, just pop it in the middle there, thanks. They're usually not that pleased to see it, to be fair, no, uh, but they accept it's part of what they have to do. Last week, um, we had some intel to say that it's an area where they are likely to be passing items. Prisoners come from all the different res units, so it's an ideal opportunity to search them coming across here. Metal, though? <laughs> Slowly walk around the pole for me, please, thank you. That's excellent, thank you, up to there. Yeah. Just walking. Right, in yeah. you go. Right, thank you, in you go. Next, thank you. Walk round for me, young man. Just go round and then up. Where are there, where are there, where are there? Got anything metal on you you shouldn't have? Just come away from it a second while it resets. Champion, that's spot on you, man, thank you. That's everybody in, yeah, 62. Victor 2 from Oscar 4, they're ready for you in the chapel there, uh, Oscar 4, over. Good thing drugs aren't metal. Duty Governor Flack is spelling out the new control measures to inmates at Friday prayers. If you don't want to attend Friday prayers, you don't have to. If you want to attend Friday prayers and mess about, you will be removed. His plain talking is not going down well. Unfortunately, one of the congregation didn't like being spoken to. Challenged the governor, he was asked to step outside of the chapel. At that point, he refused, and force had to be used to remove him from there. We've had weeks and weeks and weeks of disruption in, in the Muslim service. Nobody wants any violence in a chapel. No one wants to disrupt the religious service. Restraint is the last resort, but sometimes it needs to be done. Duty Governor Flack is meeting the Imam to discuss a plan to end the disruption. Hello, hi Imam. Hi, okay, yeah, I am. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? You're yeah, okay. I'm That's fine. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Are we just gonna have a catch up? Yeah. About uh, Friday prayers. How things are going? Yeah, so I think it'd be a good time to catch up. I mean, thinking about the real issues, uh, controlling those prisoners, the exchange of illicit items um, in the chaplaincy. Having 120 people in one place. Yeah. It's probably not the wisest thing to do, really. And what we discussed in the SLT was it was best that we split the service, get someone to come in and do the position of an extra imam would do. How many men have we excluded? We have about four or five only left on the current band. And we decided some of them should, you know, come off. There's a few of them who we feel the band should remain in place yeah. for a few more months, etc., if not permanent. How do the men um, have accepted this? Partly they felt, you know, if Diabol can't 
cater for our faith needs. Why did they take in so many yeah. Muslims? Yes. That's what they feel that they've been violated because of the control measures. Hopefully the man feels. I mean, if y'all really in there for what y'all supposed to be in there for, like, don't, you know, weed them out y'all. Don't, you ain't got a trick on them, but like, tell other motherfuckers to tighten up because you, you in here for really your faith. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Safer with the actions that we've taken. Well, you Pleasure. I think my focus is to have split services and it makes it safe for everyone. We want people to have access to weekly worship, but in the most safest possible way. Nice in the sun. Lovely. In Bullington segregation unit, dirty protester Barry Vasey. Oh, Russell Berry. Is enjoying his 30 minutes of daily exercise. Reminds me of Exmoor. Born and bred on a farm. It's the horses, sheep, pigs, poultry, and a little dairy herd. That was the highlight of my child life, the dairy herd, milking the cows. It's been four weeks since key worker Beth took on the challenge of securing Barry a prison job. So far, her efforts have hit a brick wall. Because his hygiene was kind of a main concern, they said, oh, he's not hygienic, he's not this, he's not that. He won't do the job. And then that's when I went and spoke to Governor Greenslade. So just to catch up then, we have um, met to talk about Mr. Vasey. I've had an update from his key worker, which is really, really positive. One of his motivating factors is about having money to purchase what he wants to do from his canteen. So she had talked to him um, after the, the good board we did last about doing some intel work. Unfortunately, she's looking like, I don't think so. What the fuck? <laughs> I think Miss Buchanan has been sort of uh, knocked back by those people, I think, because of his cleanliness. I disagree. So I think we're going to go ahead with that regardless. What I think. Is, is really uh, in here encouraging is mm. that a little bit of movement is starting to appear. I hope so, I hope so. That would be very encouraging, yeah. wouldn't it? At the moment, the, the most consistent good relationship with Barry seems to be the key worker. Okay, thanks very much for your time, everybody. Good. I'll be really honest, Barry is not an easy person to engage with. And I think we've been very lucky, Barry and, and Miss Buchanan, you know, their relationship is just really, really good. Yeah, you can't mess it up, so you gotta like, you gotta kinda like give him some leeway with this one because if you mess this up, then who's he gonna confide in? Who's he gonna trust? Who's he gonna have to calm him down? You know, they have humor, they talk just about every day and anything, you know, and that's what we want for Barry is to just get him out of the confines of those four walls. Good old Barry, he a sugar daddy. That's her sugar daddy. Miss Greenslade's I'm intervention down. has landed Barry his first prison job in four years. This is to give the people that just want something to do, really. For some people in their cells, and they, they especially self-harm ones, Matt, and they need something to do, some distraction and that. Barry, you all right? I used to put, to put together packets in school, pass them out. Just to keep me focused, make, 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 make me feel like I was doing something to benefit, make me feel like a part of something. I hear you've been working. But I've been told by Governor Greenstein if they don't bring any uh, pamphlets or um, packs down, packs down for me to put together booklets, mm. then I still get paid me pound a day. Yeah, you do. So can you make sure that I get my pound put on today? Yes, Cam. Do you want to go outside? It's a nice day. I was going to see if you want to go for a bit of a walk. Yeah, yeah can do. Barry, come on. So are you enjoying the job that I got you anyway, Barry? Because I Barry walk like his armpits hurt. <laughs> that my armpit hurt. I just want to say you are doing a really good well, job of it. Really it. Well, it's better than doing nothing. Did you get me that, did you? Yeah, I told you I was going to get you the job. And well, you actually done it. Yes. So you've done one thing. Yeah? One thing. <laughs> Because you'd said to me before that, huh? about your leg being sore, which is why I'd said about getting you a job in your cell, because you said you couldn't go it's down. Nice and sore, it's just bloody painful. Let's not do that, please. Let's not do it. Don't, please don't. Oh, I know. It's the first time that you've, I've heard him make a joke, which is really nice. I am 
I'm proud of Barry. I actually really am. So, dear James, what we saying? <laughs> this music is like from me, myself, and Irene and shit. This shit is cringy as hell. Look at this couple. It's perfect. Well, I was talking to you too fast that last time. Were you? I didn't, yeah, I couldn't, you couldn't tell. a bit wrong, but it doesn't matter anyway. He doesn't see it, but like him having a job is such a big thing. And it's just like he needs to have praise for that. He needs to be recognized for that. And that's what we're trying to do at the minute. It's just that sort of motivation and keeping him going, really. You are doing super good, though, with this, Barry. And it's nice to see you doing something as well. Oh, yeah, I know that. Oh. At the box. It's 9 a.m. on Mulberry Unit. The self-isolators are being unlocked for their 30 minutes of association. Hey. <laughs> and it's been three days since Ford claimed his medication was stolen. This is my third day without my meds. So why aren't they getting replacing them? Do you know what I mean? I don't get it. Do you know what I mean? I just don't get it. As a result of them being stolen, healthcare have been reluctant to, to give him um, replacements. Um, because they're not sure what he's done with him, whether he's sold them or, or what. If the landing was packed now, I'd be on edge, do you know what I mean? It's just mental health issues, isn't it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I've just told them I'm going to cut myself last night, and now they're giving me a brand new razor stick to go do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mad, isn't it? Man, like, what's wrong with them? He just literally said, if that's true, he was going to harm himself last night, then y'all going to... Absent-minded. One of them have got a clue, mate. They're supposed to look after you, but duty of care. With their 30 minutes over, Joe needs to lock up the self-isolators. But she's unaware of Ford's state of distress. Hello, Joe. I'm code red on Marlborough, South 16, over. Oh, he was not bullshitting. He was about that action. He really did that. He told y'all on the camera, and y'all some menace to society too. Y'all ain't even get a warning. Y'all just let him go. Uh, on Mulberry Unit. Prison officer Joe Chappell has discovered self-isolator Jamie Ford bleeding in his cell. You're not good at all. Can I use a towel just spit over it to try and stop the bleeding? I don't need your help. I don't need your help. Listen, I needed your help yesterday and the day before. My meds stopped me from cutting up. The meds have gone out of the system, so now I'm going to cut myself all the time. I've been asking for meds for three days, boys. This is the best I've heard of it. Three days. This is the best I've heard of it. Every time I get on the bell, turn the fucking bell off. I pressed it again, you turned the fucking bell off. I pressed it again, you turned it off. The fourth time I pressed it, he answered the bell and said, Oh, it just so happens, the woman's on the phone sorting your meds out now. Bullshit. What, because I'm on the bell, you, all of a sudden the fucking woman's ringing up for my meds. Bullshit. You're just fobbing me off every day, every day. I've got voices in my head telling you to cut up. It's either attack one of you lot or cut up yourself. But all I'm concerned about now is you. From 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 now on, he he's keeping it real. He's not lying to y'all. I believe in everything he say. That man said they gave me. I said I was gonna cut myself last night, and they just gave me a razor to do it. And he went upstairs and did that. Like I, I believe you. My bad, Jamie. You got it. Because I I got a good relationship with you. I like you, and I don't I don't want to see you doing shit like this. But I understand why you've done it. Yeah, exactly. You've done this three days ago, then I wouldn't need to do this. I know three days ago, you know we made you know? the phone call. I was there when... When I get on that bell, you shouldn't turn it off straight away. Yeah. Not even listening to what I've got to say, you just turn it off. He is likely to cut up again. Yeah. And his, his threats are that he's now going to go on his legs okay. and then his neck. Ford is now being assessed by the mental health team and will be placed on observation five times an hour. As you can see, there's, a, there's quite a lot of blood. Um, he's put some, some words on the wall as well, which aren't the nicest. We're not qualified to deal with it. We're not psychiatrists. We're not mental health professionals. I think sometimes we just tell them the things that we think they may need to hear from us. We can only do our best at our level. 
<laughs> that's not doing your best, man. You're underachieving at your workplace. Your boss needs to reassess your position and maybe fire your ass. No, it's real talk. Talking about I tell them what they need to hear. What You just told me you're not a psychiatrist. So what do you mean you tell them what they need to hear? Listen to their problems and get them what they need. That could have been avoided. It's irritating. At Dear Boat Young Offenders, it's the day of Leon's adjudication in front of an independent judge. If found guilty of assaulting another prisoner, he could have significant time added to his sentence. Hey, I'm the judge then. Uh, yeah. okay. Sit down, please, Mr. Cook. The charge, as I understand it, relates to assaulting another inmate whilst in this establishment. Is that correct? That's correct. What's your plea to this matter? Not Certain things have been disclosed to me prior to you coming into here because a person who was linked to you came in and he pleaded guilty to the particular matter before the cut before this adjudication. Now what he said to me was that he took full responsibility for this particular incident. He said that you only became involved as a consequence of protecting him. Now in that regard I've asked whether the complainant in this matter is willing to give evidence. I understand he's been discharged. Yes. As it stands then, we have no officers who witnessed this particular incident. Hey, free that man, G. The other individual has now... I told you what I just said. They need to be firing people. Somebody got discharged or... Wait, wait. that wasn't him. Now being discharged, you can't ask him any, any questions. So the individual has now been discharged. The individual, you can't ask him okay. any, any questions. So the case against you is dismissed. Thank you. He's still a minister of society for that tattoo. Back on E-Wing, Officer Dalston is keen to find out how Leon got on. Obviously, the kid who we assaulted got home, yeah. so he, he couldn't give evidence. And then Mike, he's gone in there, so he takes full responsibility on that. Right, so uh, that one's been dismissed against you. Yeah, yeah. Mike just took the rap. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, well, fair enough. Fuck knows what that happened, though. We know that he was involved. Um, but at the end of the day, if somebody's prepared to take the rap for it, and I suppose Leon's effectively getting away with, with assaulting another prisoner, but such is the way it goes. Y'all got that man on video karate kicking somebody in the head, whooping they, and still dismiss that mug. That's, that's... Uh, Leon. I wouldn't say he's a lost cause. He's been in the system a good number of years. He's caused me a bit of bother in the past, and he's, you know, he's maybe let us down once or twice. But we've um, got to give him chances and opportunities. Otherwise, they're not going to get anywhere, and they're just going to get stuck in a cycle. What the get anywhere, and they're just going to get stuck in a cycle. What is going on? I knew me like what? <laughs> I think he will spend a lot of time on basic here. That's but fun. That's just Leon. It wouldn't be Leon if he wasn't on basic regime. Leon's not the only prisoner on E Wing who's been on a restrictive regime. With his chapel ban still in place, Janaid is confined to his cell. I've just been praying in my cell, twenty-three hours a day, reading when I can. Just praying, getting on with it. If you make mistakes, fair enough, everyone makes mistakes, but just pray and hope Allah forgives you for your sins. I'm actually going to one of the wings to give some news to one of the men. We had an incident in chapel where we banned a few people. There's some of them whom we reviewed this week to see, you know, is there any chance that we should try to help them come back to the chapel or do they need additional time to think about um, what they've done wrong. It's quite important that we tell them from a faith perspective what's expected when they come to prayers about well, respect. We're, we're, I'm sorry, I respect whatever you're talking about. I respect it all, but where has she been this whole episode? We're just going to see Mr. Junaid Al-Hassan for two minutes. Okay. Junaid, Asalaamu Alaikum. Are you decent? How's it going? You okay? Can we 
change your light on, yeah? How yeah. you been, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Good. Just enjoying life as usual. We've seen about this bun, man. That's what I've come to see you. You want to take a seat? We've decided on this occasion, inshallah, we're going to let you come back to Juma. Yeah? That me back, yeah? That's you back now, yeah? That me back. Yeah? It'd be nice to see you with I'll your nice smile there. Yeah? He's excited about his faith. Okay. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And, uh, or about the money he about to get back to getting. Um, if you mess around, you're going to ban you for another two months. No, really <laughs> for the first time in eight weeks, Junaid is joining over 100 inmates from across the prison at Jamar Prayers. With the group split and numbers capped, the prayer service has taken place without unrest. This definitely was a positive step forward. And I think all of us at Diabolt, including all the staff and the management, we want people to pray, people to have access to prayer. But unfortunately, sometimes it becomes unsafe when there's a lot of people that go there for the wrong reasons. First week back, I'm staying back, back to normal procedure. I feel happy, man. Still on seeing all the brothers again, but I'm feeling nice, but I haven't seen a lot of the brothers in a while. It's nice to have Junaid back. It's nice to be back, man. The moral of the story was, when you do wrong, to understand that you've done wrong and seek forgiveness from God, okay? Why didn't do wrong together, man, didn't you? You've done wrong to be in jail, though, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Following another serious assault, Leon has been moved to Category B prison, adult prison. Duh. See if he still got that energy in a Category B adult prison. Well done. Okay, where was she? Oh, man, this one's on. Beth was awarded her key working with Barry. Beth was awarded. Oh, no, what did she award? Award? I got um, extraordinary uh, mental strength. For a new prison. <laughs> so life begins at 40. So he was getting better there, and they moved him out of there, and he was getting better. I'm hoping it's true. <laughs> Alright man, see you leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. That's it. You ask and I shall receive. If I ask for 200,000, damn, I almost said 200,000 likes. 200, if you made it this far, like the video. Oh yeah, let me tell y'all something real quick. Any of y'all got an air fryer? If you got an air fryer, G, listen to me. Make a grilled cheese. Now, two pieces of cheese, two pieces of bread. And you can put some meat in there if you want to, okay? So what I do is I lay the bread on a plate, one slice. Put one cheese, then put like three pieces of meat. You know, deli meat. And then put another cheese, then put the bread on top. And then I spread bacon on that one. I'm bacon. Spread butter on that top one, then put it in the air fryer. 350 seven minutes once that seven minutes is up flip it then put some butter on the other side three minutes take it out cut it in half a hey, have a blessed night <laughs>